Today, Elise and I are continuing our conversation with Debbie Sterling, founder and CEO of the toy company Goldie Blocks. Make sure to check out part one of our conversation with Debbie if you haven't already. Welcome to J House, where we interview people we admire who have developed skills and created cool things. We want to learn from their experiences to inspire us in our lives. Goldie Blocks has a mission of helping girls get introduced to and get to play with STEM toys. And STEM is a focus on science, technology, engineering, and math. Why did you decide to make Goldie Blocks? I was one of the only women in my engineering classes at Stanford. I noticed that all of my male classmates were going on after college and starting companies and really changing the world. And it bothered me that there weren't more women doing it. And as I looked more and more into it, I realized that, you know, really girls from a very young age aren't encouraged in the same way that boys are to get interested in engineering and uh, inventing and coding. And so to me, it just became something I was so passionate about. It just, it felt like my life calling. And I sort of dropped everything, quit my day job, and just poured everything I had into building Goldie Blocks so that I could inspire more girls to get into it. What is an engineer? And I mean, for me, I've been through law school, I'm an adult, and honestly, I don't really know what an engineer is or what that looks like. So can you describe for us what is an engineer? You know, it's funny because I didn't know what an engineer was either. I mean, growing up and even in high school, when my math teacher told me I should be an engineer, I, I pictured a train driver and I didn't know what it was. And engineering is really broad. And I think that's why sometimes it's like hard to define. And they do a lot of stuff. But if I had to boil it down, I would say engineers are problem solvers who make and build things that fix stuff. What advice do you have for girls who want to become an engineer? Well, my biggest advice is to not be so hard. Like I was so hard on myself and I was so worried that I had to be perfect and I had to get straight A's and that everything had to come really easily to me and that if it didn't, that I shouldn't be doing it. And I think that's really the wrong way to think about this kind of stuff. Um, this is the kind of stuff that you have to work hard and stick with it. And, you know, in the same way, like nobody's born to become a doctor overnight. You have to have years and years of practice and learning and training before you could operate on somebody. The same is true for engineering. And so just learning and not being afraid or ashamed to just admit when you don't know something, because actually it takes a lot of bravery to be willing to raise your hand and say, wait a minute, I don't understand. Could someone explain this to me? Um, that eventually is what I figured out and what I did. And I still do to this day. And that's what makes me a good engineer and now a good entrepreneur and a good CEO. Yeah, there's a very strong princess culture and you have this ambition of creating something similar to the Disney culture of princesses, of a culture of characters that are coders and are engineers and are doing these things in the STEM world. Tell us about your, your current goals and your current dreams as you move in that direction. And I know from your past, you've had some very ambitious dreams. You know, when you started off, there's the Kickstarter. And then to be in a Super Bowl commercial as a small business, you know, you win this opportunity. And then getting into Toys R Us or getting into Walmart, like you continue to hit huge milestones. Then going from toys to books to curriculums, like you continue to expand. What What's in the future? Where are you going? And how are you working towards making that dream an actualization for the future? Yeah, well, from day one, I mean, I, I really dreamed big for Goldie Blocks. And the way I thought about this was, you know, if Barbie and Disney Princess and these brands that, um, that really become, you know, for little girls all over the world, they become these, you know, icons, right? I mean, they become almost like a rite of passage of girlhood. Like every girl pretty much around the world at some point like owns and plays with a Barbie. Every girl sees a Disney princess movie and every girl gets to live out the fantasy of being 
you know, a princess or a pop star or a fashionista, whether it's the shows that she watches, to the toys she plays with, to the costumes that she wears for Halloween, to her backpack that she brings to school. And it just occurred to me that, you know, there are these iconic role models for girls in children's entertainment and toys, and there's not one that is, you know, an inventor, coder, maker archetype. Th those are all, uh, you know, for the boys. And so, and so that's really, that was my big audacious dream for Goldie Blocks from day one. And we started with toys and then we expanded to books and now we're expanding into entertainment. And, um, oh my gosh, it's been a roller coaster of a journey, but I'm so passionate about it because even though we've had so much success so far with the brand and with the reach that we've had, we've barely scratched the surface of what I hope to ultimately build, which is a franchise of that global scale and influence. How did becoming a mom help you with Goldie Blocks? Ah, oh, great question. Becoming a mom was a huge help in so many ways. Number one, um, it forced me to completely rethink how I live my life and the priorities that I make. Before I had my first child, I was 100% 24-7 working on Goldie Blocks. And that was actually not healthy. It's actually not good to spend all of your every waking hour on one thing. And once I had my baby, I had something in my life for the first time in a long time that was more important than my business. Not that my business isn't incredibly important, but what ended up happening was I, I hired the people that I had needed to hire but had been kind of procrastinating. I put the systems in place that needed to happen so that my business could thrive even if I wasn't making every decision and doing every little thing. And lo and behold, as soon as I started doing that, the business really improved and started to get to the next level because I was, you know, weirdly so in spending less time on it, the time that I did spend on it, I was better and more effective. And uh, the other big difference is that now that I'm a mom, I have a way better understanding of um, what other parents are, are going through and thinking about when they buy toys for their kids. And also just knowing like, how important it is for kids themselves to really want to um, opt in and um, and how young kids can be before they start setting their preferences. Like already my son's only three and we buy him what he asks for. It's like amazing how he even knows what he wants, yeah. but he does. And so these are things that I now like really deeply understand that I didn't understand before I had kids. How did your mom and grandma inspire you? My mom was a big inspiration to me because when I was about your age, Elise, um, every day when I came home from school, I would go into the kitchen and help my mom make chocolates because she decided to start her own chocolate company called The <laughs> Confection Connection. And she actually had a kiosk at our local mall and where she set up her own business. And um, now looking back, I realized that she was a real role model for me as an entrepreneur. And my grandmother, who unfortunately passed away before I was born, but she's always been a legend in my life and um, you know, a legend within our family. She was an animator for Disney and mm -hmm. Charles Schultz. Uh, uh, so she drew the Peanuts cartoons. Yeah. She was one of the um, designers and creators of the Mr. Magoo character. Sure. And, um, and I've always loved drawing and cartooning uh, my whole life which I used when I, when I first created the Goldie Blocks character. So she, she's always been a huge inspiration to me as well. Well, Debbie, we really appreciate your time. And more than that, we appreciate your example and how it's gonna impact my daughters and a whole generation of girls to change the world and for it to be filled with more of the you know female engineers and those doing STEM for our future. So thank oh. you for that. Oh, well. Thank you. Oh, uh, thanks. Thanks so much, Elise. It was great to meet you. It was great chatting with both of you. Thanks for having me on. Thanks for joining us today. If you liked what you heard, we'd love for you to leave a podcast review. To follow along on our family's adventures, connect with us at Jay House Vlogs 
on YouTube, Facebook, and Instagram. Thanks for listening. Jay House out.